So welcome back everybody. Welcome to the CCC 2016 in Montreal. Uh, this morning we have the pleasure to have Dr. Gerald Weisenberg. Dr. Weisenberg, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. All right. So Dr. Weisenberg uh, completed his cardiology training at the University of Toronto before pursuing two years of research training in nuclear cardiology in UCLA. On his return to Canada, he began an independent research career into the cardiac applications of magnetic resonance imaging and spectroscopy, CT and PET, and more recently, PET-MR. He, he settled at the St. Joseph Hospital in London in 1980 and then moved to London Health Sciences Center in 2001. He has been a peer reviewer for the Heart and Stroke Foundation in Ontario and CIHR for more than 30 years. So, Dr. Weisenberg, thanks again for being here. So the purpose here is uh, to have an interview on how to, um, to, if you have any advice for uh, young trainees seeking a job in cardiology uh, in Canada. So Dr. Weisenberg, uh, um, first, how did you settle in your uh, current uh, research uh, track? Uh, when I went away to uh, do research in nuclear cardiology, mm -hmm. nuclear cardiology was in its infancy. No one even had heard of it. Uh, so when I returned to Canada, that, that was obviously the technique that I wanted to bring back. And I was very fortunate that I aligned with a biophysicist, Dr. Frank Prado, who's also based at St. Joseph's Hospital in London. And he's really the brains. He's the smart guy. I'm, I'm just the idea creator. But together, we were lucky, we forged a collaboration uh, that has looked at developing imaging and how it applies to studying cardiac disease mm -hmm. so that we can treat disease better. So it, it really is through a fortunate meeting with Dr. Prado and we were of like mind in terms of the projects that we wanted to do and we've worked together now for 35, 36 years. And what were the challenges you encountered during your, your career as a, as a clinician and scientist? Uh, the hardest part is uh, getting funding. Right. Uh, and therefore, the character trait that you need to have is a stiff spine. You, you need to learn to accept no for an answer. Okay. You need to be confident that if you have a good idea, that that idea ultimately will win the day. Uh, and listen if you get uh, bad reviews or suggestions on the review of an application, of a manuscript. Uh, no is a word that you don't hear. You just keep on trying. But the most difficult part is to keep on trying in the face of several rejections. Uh, and that's the only way you will sustain a research career is being persistent because we all fail. Okay. Even the best will fail. Okay. And you now act as a, a grant reviewer, right, for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Mm. Um, what advice would you give to a, a trainee seeking for his first funding opportunity? How to w write a good grant? The uh, summary, the, there are two critical pages. So there's always in any grant there's a summary page, mm -hmm. and then there's the detailed proposal. Usually it's 11, 12 pages. Of all that, two pages are the critical piece. The summary, the summary needs to be very clear, mm -hmm. including most of your good ideas, your methods, the background. It needs to be clearly written. And the first page of the detailed proposal needs to, again, introduce the reader. Uh, the reviewer is often not a world expert in the field that you're okay. applying for. Okay. You need to be able to convey in clear, concise language your idea, why it's important, how it's going to get done, how it's going to be analyzed. And it's an art. When you're doing it for the first time, you're not going to be as good as when you do it five years later, ten years later. The reviewers understand that, mm -hmm. but you need to do your best job of putting things down clearly. And for this purpose, I guess the role of, uh, of having a good mentor is uh, pr primordial. The mentor is very important, latching on to someone who's done this before, yeah. who will proofread and get others. Get, get your family, 
get your dog to, to proofread it because you always make mistakes mm -hmm. in grammar, in language, spelling, and that just turns off the reviewers. Okay. Just those simple, basic things. Just make sure others have read this over, that it's not just you, your eyes, but others have gone over it several times. Okay. What was the role of the mentors uh, to shape your own career? Did you have any? The, uh, the mentors, uh, the most important mentors were the ones during my research training that I did in Los Angeles, who I've still uh, kept in contact with all these years later, Heinz Shelbert at uh, UCLA, uh, and did the same thing when I was writing manuscripts, mm -hmm. uh, would go over things carefully, give me suggestions, you need someone who's aligned, who is guiding you, thinks the same way, has the same interests, and will guide you through their experience. Okay, okay. Looking back at your career, um, is there anything you think that you would do over if you had the chance to? It's a more uh, personal question. Yeah, well, uh, the uh, at the time I could have I could have stayed in UCLA. The, the research climate in the United States is, uh, is different. I made a lifestyle choice. My, my wife and I made a lifestyle choice. So it all depends. It, you know, your question, although simple, really has many facets to it. If I wanted my research career to have been better, maybe staying in the U.S., but okay. uh, I made a lifestyle choice. Uh, other than that, it's not, and I won't say that's a regret. Uh, that was just a choice I made at the time. How do you think the field of research in cardiology changed in the last year since you, since you began? Uh, funding, uh, okay. just the availability of dollars. For example, at the Heart and Stroke Foundation level, the percentage of successful grants uh, because of less available money. It's okay. not that the science isn't yeah. as good, it's that the funds are much less available. And I think that's, that's a problem for the clinician mm -hmm. scientist. He's competing with PhD scientists. That's, that's their role, that's their job. They have labs, they have the time to prepare the manuscripts, to prepare the research applications of the clinician scientist doesn't have, and when funding is less available, the entire role of the clinician scientist is potentially threatened mm -hmm. unless something's done to protect that entire group of, of people to make funds perhaps separately available for them, but that particular role is threatened. Okay. Dr. Weisenberg, uh, those advices have been very, uh, very insightful and very uh, effective for the, the trainees all across the country. So uh, on behalf of all the trainees in cardiology across the country, I thank you for your presence here today. Thank you. Thank you.